The first thing you want to do is on a desktop or laptop computer, not on your phone, you want to go to the address that will show the app. And from there, you're going to click Copy. Now, you'll have to create an account with Glide. So let's go ahead and do that. So it should bring up a page like this one, which asks you to allow your Google Drive account to be accessed by Glide. So we're going to do this. Okay. Then here, we're going to ignore the two options and just click do this later. So once we've made a copy of the app, it's going to take us to the editor. We're going to dismiss these messages. Okay. So now this, what you're seeing is your version of the app that only you have access to and no one else can see for now. So in here, you'll want to publish the app so that you can actually have access to. Okay, and so now your app is at this link. So if you copy that, and you send it to yourself or use your cell phone number, like you'll be able to actually access your version of the app. Then what we want to do is we want to replace the Google Sheet that is currently feeding this app. And the reason is because when Glide made a copy of the app, it created a copy of the sheet, but some of the features don't get copied over properly. So to do that, we're going to go to the settings wells on the left side, and then we're going to go to data sync on the right side. Here, you'll see that there's a little thing called data source, and we're going to replace that. But first, let's open a new tab, and we're going to make a copy of the Google Sheet that is the template. So the link is both in the FAQ instructions and on the comments, as so on the description for this video. So. You get that link, you make a copy, that's going to go directly into your Google Drive, and the document is going to be called Copy of Set Contacts Google Sheet. All right? So if we go back to Glide, then we're going to click on the little three dots next to Data Sources. I'm going to say Replace. And then here we see we have the copy of the Contacts Google Sheet. So we're going to select that. Okay, and nothing changes, and that's normal, because they're essentially the same sheet, but with a few extra things. All right, so finally, we want to edit the Google Sheets. So to do that, either we click the pencil icon, or we just go back to our sheet. And then um, in the yellow cell at the top here, you want to put your email. So email at gmail.com, hub. And then that means you are now set up to use the app. On the left side, you'll notice there's a little checkbox. That means you have editing privileges for the app. If you want to give someone else editing privileges, you just click next to their name. It's going to say like, hey, there's, you may have clicked on a checkbox that's not visible. Let's say yes. And once you click it, it becomes visible. That's just cosmetic. But that's it. Once you've done that, you are ready to go. So one final thing, You'll notice that when you go to the Glide interface, in the top left corner, it will tell you how many rows you have left to use um, for this app. And once you exceed the number of rows, you'll have to either get a boost to get in more rows or change to uh, a paid plan. Uh, if you don't want to do either of those two things, there are a couple things you can do to make more room. So on the Google Sheet, essentially every row here counts but also uh, rows in other tabs are going to count as well. So if you go to the Department and Position tab, what you could do is try to reduce the number of rows on this tab to a minimum. And so to do that, you can you know, remove the empty spaces that are here just to see more clearly and remove the positions that you're not going to want to use. And so the more you do that, the more rows are going to free, but that's not going to be a ton. The last way, finally, you can remove rows is if you unhide 
the sheet that is called backend. So you click on the bottom left corner, you go to backend. It's going to give you a warning, but you say OK. You see here you have a drop down with all the position. That drop down is calculated automatically using the department positions here. It just regroups everything in one drop down, and that's what creates this menu sorry, here that shows you all the positions. Okay, so you can essentially sacrifice this to get more room. So already for removing positions from here, it's going to remove them from this drop down, and so we're going to have less rows, so that's going to save room. But you could just, you know, sacrifice this entire column by just deleting the formula that is here in D2. You just remove it. It's going to give you a warning, okay? And so obviously that's going to save you a lot of rows. And then the only downside is that when you go to your uh, contacts, now this position drop down is no longer going to work. You have you can still manually enter, you know, like director of photo. Um, you can do that, uh, but it's a little bit less practical. And also, when you're in the application, um, and you go to add a contact, it has a position menu, and that position menu feeds on your spreadsheet. So now that we've removed all of our position, it's going to be empty. So here, we'll have to say, um, instead of a choice, let's just use a text entry. So I'm going to duplicate the one that says name. And then I'm going to remove the one that says position. And then I'm going to instead say, OK, this field um, populates the position drop down on the, on the Google Sheet. And uh, and that's it, and we're done. And this way, when you add a contact, you can just add it manually, and that's the best alternative. But we can see that having removed the position dropdown saved us uh, two 250 rows. So obviously, that's not negligible. It just is, uh, you lose a quality of life uh, feature. Uh, that's it. I hope you have fun with this app. Uh, feel free to comment on this video with your questions if you're having any difficulties installing this.